mind of a man can find works differently than someone on the outside. We got a runner. Showtime. I'm Warden Hobbs. Hobbs. Where's Warden Marsh? Who were you before you came in here? I break out of prisons for a living. You don't look that smart. Someone set me up. I'm gonna find out who, and I'm gonna find out why. You tell whoever put me here, I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. Go make some friends. You're gonna need them. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm explaining a film from 2013 titled Escape Plan. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. The scene begins with a man named Breslin who has just arrived at a prison called Bendwater, he is immediately confronted by one of the gangs that are controlling the prison. Because of opposition and trouble, Breslin was put in solitary confinement, he memorized every room he went through, while in the isolation room. When the rations arrived, he asked the guard what time it was, Breslin seemed to be counting down from there. Meanwhile, outside the prison, a car explodes, shortly after the woman leaves the car. This of course surprised the guards, not to mention the prisoners who started to revolt. When the situation began to turn chaotic, Breslin was no longer in his cell, the guards took action by closing all the doors of the prison. Apparently Breslin tried to escape by disguised as a member of the fire department, he was immediately picked up by his friend, who was then dropped off at a roadside fast food joint. When Breslin was about to call someone, suddenly the police came and started surrounding him, the police caught him and took him back to the prison. He was greeted by a colleague named Clark, who introduced himself to the head of the prison that he was representing a company called BNC Security, a company responsible for the security of national prisons. They were hired by the Federal Service to maximize the security of each prison, Breslin then explained how he was able to escape. There are three ways to escape, the first way is to know the layout, then observe the daily activities inside the prison and the last way is to get help from the outside. Breslin entered solitary confinement and beat another prisoner first, which made the guard less tight than in a regular cell. After starting to attract attention at the main gate at 4 p.m. after coordinating with his partner. Before Breslin could continue, the manager asked how he entered the security code, Breslin said he used a milk carton because the box had transparent plastic inside, from which he called a tool to find out the four-digit security code that the security will enter. After knowing the code, he immediately left the prison with a little drama that he had done before, like the car explosion earlier, the head of the prison seemed impressed with the way Breslin escaped. Next, Clark explains that Breslin for about 14 years escaped from every prison he entered, after Breslin finished and returned to his office. Arriving at the office, Breslin immediately organized a meeting with his client named Jessica. This woman expressed interest in Breslin's expertise in testing prison security systems and she offered to invite him to cooperate in entering a prison with security systems to ensure no one entered. The whereabouts of the prison is said to be unknown, and because the risk is so high, Jessica promises to be paid double what Breslin usually receives. Breslin also agreed and asked and the work would start, Jessica said as soon as possible and then Breslin would be picked up by their agent. To disguise himself as a prisoner, Breslin will disguise himself as Anthony Portos, who is from Madrid. Preparatory work began, after which Breslin was implanted with a chip to determine his movements, he immediately left and by the side of the road a man approached and electrocuted him. Breslin was put on the car, they also removed the motion sensor chip that had been implanted earlier. When Breslin found himself in a prison he had never seen before, Breslin, as usual, began to examine the layout of the prison. After Breslin was brought into the interrogation room, he met Hobbs, the prison's head and architect. Hobbs said that this prison is an international prison, the prisoners also come from many different countries and are certainly serious criminals. Breslin asked for an exit code that the warden should have known, but Hobbs said that there were no such codes or escape codes in the prison. Breslin was brought back to his cell when it coincided with the time when all the convicts were gathered in Block A, where Breslin was staying. Breslin is immediately served by a prisoner being brutally tortured by guards, then Breslin is approached by a man who tells him to mingle and find some friends. After a while, several men approached and laughed at him like fresh meat, Breslin didn't want to be taken lightly, immediately hit them first, then a man came to demand an end to the fight. The man's name was Emil Rotmeyer, 
at first Breslin did not believe the person he had just met, but it seemed that Rotmeyer knew who Breslin was. Day by day, the friendship between Breslin and Rotmeyer grew closer, while Breslin continued to pay attention to the layout of the prison. Rotmeyer strangely asked Breslin why he kept looking at every corner of the room, Breslin replied that he wanted to enter the isolation room. So they plotted a plan, they deliberately fought to attract the attention of the guards, so they were put in an isolation room. Sure enough, the guards finally arrived and took them both to the isolation ward. Unlike the prison isolation room he entered before, the isolation room Breslin entered this time was extremely uncomfortable for him, where there was a lot of spotlight and of course hot. And shines directly at the detainees without any barrier. After Breslin was released from the isolation room, Rotmeyer approached him again and asked him what he had found, Breslin only said that he needed a piece of metal, if Rotmeyer got the metal, he could give it. Both out of prison. Rotmeyer agreed and he immediately asked the guard to take him to Hobbes, who after meeting Hobbes asked him to speak. But apparently, again, it was a hoax, Rotmeyer purposely said nothing, and then he was immediately tortured by stuffing a running water pipe and putting it in his mouth. Luckily Hobbes didn't kill him and took Rotmeyer back to his cell, after which Rotmeyer went back to Breslin and talked about a lot of things including asking what Breslin's real occupation was. Breslin said he was an escapee, but this time he was hired not to break out but to silence and kill slowly. Breslin eventually invited Rotmeyer to plan his escape, which is why Breslin always paid attention to the layout of the prison because he wanted to know where he would go if he escaped later. Breslin also explained that he had to return to the isolation ward to examine the secret room below, as he intended to focus the light on the pegs attached to his clothes. So it can make the latch rusty and easy to open. They began to act, Rotmeyer approached a Muslim prisoner named Javed, at first there was a fight between them due to a misunderstanding. They fought and fought so in the end all three were put in an isolation room. Rotmeyer entertains the camera, chatting non-stop as Breslin twists the sweat-soaked shutters. After Breslin managed to remove all the bolts he installed, he opened the lid and immediately saw a long ladder extending downwards. Breslin ran all the way down the ladder, but to his surprise, he realized where he was on a ship in the middle of the ocean and also in the middle of nowhere. Meanwhile, Hobbes goes to Rotmeyer because he chatters constantly, Breslin also turns inside but unfortunately he pushes the leaky pipe causing a spray of water that causes him to be thrown down again. This brought the water to the surface, the guards immediately protected the three of them, and fortunately Breslin returned to the isolation room. A curious Rotmeyer immediately asked Breslin what was the matter. But Breslin was content to keep quiet. On the other hand, Breslin's colleagues began to worry about his condition, asking Clark for information on what Breslin was actually doing. Clark said Breslin was doing a pretty hard job commensurate with the high salary, then Clark called Hobbes to ask him to separate Breslin and Rotmeyer. Hobbes immediately ordered his men to wake Breslin and torture Breslin, the guards beat Breslin relentlessly, which made him very angry with the people who had kept him in this prison. The next day, Breslin and Rotmeyer continued their routine while analyzing the situation. After feeling confident in their efforts, they have now implemented the final protocol, asking for assistance. Rotmeyer convinced Breslin not to care because he had connections in and out of prison, so things were sorted out. Hush, one of Breslin's associates now knows his whereabouts, Hush manages to track down a prison run by former soldiers. The prison still doesn't have a federal license, so you could say it's illegal. Meanwhile, Breslin began his plan by first going to the prison doctor to treat his injuries, Breslin asked the doctor for help. Besides, he also said that what the doctor did was wrong, Breslin advised him to quit his job immediately and find another more noble job. When Breslin was about to be injected, he deliberately fell down and picked up a piece of paper, and after stitching the wound, Breslin went to Rotmeyer, where they were discussing their escape plan. Breslin needed a pair of glasses to create the hexadecimal radii by which he could know half of their positions. As Breslin and Rotmeyer prepared to execute their plan, apparently one of the guards saw it and reported it to Hobbes. Hobbes immediately went to Breslin's cell and said he was looking for someone Breslin, so now he is not allowed to do anything with Rotmeyer because the people who paid him want Breslin in prison forever. 
Breslin tries to negotiate by promising to try to capture Victor X, Mannheim aka Emil Rottmeier, as well as his network, on the condition that Hobbes tell him where the prison is and release him. Instead of teaming up with Hobbes, Breslin actually hatched another plan behind his back. Breslin goes back to Rottmeier and tells him of his plans with Hobbes. At first, Rottmeier hesitated but Breslin convinced him. In the end, Javed played his part by pretending he knew all of Breslin's plans with Rottmeier. He told all this to Hobbes. But before Javed said it all, he asked Hobbes to be allowed to pray in open space so he could look up at the sky and Hobbes agreed. While praying that Javed would steal the opportunity to measure star lines using the semiconductor Breslin had given him earlier, after success, Javed returned the semiconductor to Breslin to him. After a long study, Breslin drew conclusions about longitude, wind position and water movement. After all, Breslin assumed they were off the coast of Morocco. Breslin then went to the doctor and asked him to read one of the chapters in his book, a the chapter contains the oaths and promises of a doctor. Out of curiosity, the doctor finally read the chapter, after which he asked the guards to take Breslin to his clinic under the pretext that there would be further examinations. When Breslin was with him, the doctor asked him what he needed. Breslin then smiled, showing that the doctor was on his side. Breslin then tells Rotmeyer that the doctors are fine, it's just a matter of how they convinced Javed to cheat on Hobbes. However, Hobbes apparently discovered their plan after seeing CCTV footage where Breslin is said to be talking to another inmate in cell C. Hobbes suspects Breslin helped the prisoners in cell C escape. Finally, Hobbes ordered the guards to increase security in cell C, while in cell A, Breslin needed a lighter to break the atmosphere. Then Javed played his role to challenge one of the big criminals, after Javed caused an uproar, other criminals got into a fight and chaos was inevitable. The guards then fired smoke bombs to quell the chaos, but the chaos escalated. It was at this critical moment that Breslin, Rotmeyer and Javed tried to escape, but unfortunately, one of the guards saw their movements through CCTV. Hobbes then orders all the guards to chase them away, gunshots are heard and in response as Breslin and his friends have no capital, they fight the guards with their bare hands. They manage to get some guns after defeating some guards, but just as they were about to escape a step, Javed was shot and had to stop them. Rotmeyer tries to convince Javed that they will escape, but Javed realizes the bullet wound is too severe so he orders Rotmeyer and the others to leave. With a gun, Javed then challenged the guards and shot them, unfortunately he had to die because he was hit by countless shots of the guards. Breslin and Rotmeyer decided to go their separate ways, Breslin told Rotmeyer to wait outside in the prepared helicopter. After boarding, Hobbes and the rest of the guards continued to attack Rotmeyer, while Breslin entered the ship's security control room and cut off all power. Hobbes continues to chase them, while Breslin tries to get out of the ship. After seeing Breslin under the sea, the helicopter lowered the ropes for him to climb up. Breslin then runs up the stairs but Hobbes continues to shoot him, Breslin then receives a gun from Rotmeyer from the helicopter, which he immediately shoots at the steel tank with Hobbes still there. For the final blow, Breslin says, boom, and an explosion occurs with Hobbes inside. They manage to escape and the last prison boat explodes. After landing, the Rotmeyer van arrived. Breslin was surprised when a woman stepped out of the car, who turned out to be Jessica, the CIA agent who had served him. It turns out that during that time, Jessica was Rotmeyer's daughter and confidant. Jessica then explains that her father has a special code, Rotmeyer, which means maximum security prison. It also means that Jessica hired Breslin to get her father out of jail, Rotmeyer then thanked Breslin and offered to hitchhike but he refused. After Breslin returned to his office, he received word that Clark had been invited to be the CEO of a project called, The Tomb. That's why he let Breslin go to jail, but they apparently got their revenge on Breslin by kidnapping Clark and putting him in a prison in the middle of nowhere at the end of the movie. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on future videos. Leave a like to support the channel.